Due to increasing air pollution contributed from cars, the United States Environmental Pollution Agency, also known as the EPA, was established to enforce emissions regulations. EVAP systems have been mandatory on all OBD2 vehicles. Today, I will be reviewing the vent valve solenoid to a 2014 Chevrolet Silverado 1500. The purpose of the vent valve solenoid is to control the flow of air into and out of the charcoal canister. The vent valve solenoid, also known as just the vent valve, is part of the evaporative emissions control system, commonly called the EVAP system. During normal operation, the vent valve is normally open, allowing fresh air to flow into the charcoal canister. The vent valve will close only when the ECM commands it to close for testing of the system for leaks. When testing for gross leaks, the vent valve is energized, causing it to close and the purge valve is energized as well, causing it to open, which is normally closed. As a result, engine vacuum creates pressure when the purge valve is open. The fuel tank pressure is then monitored by the ECM to decipher if there is pressure buildup. If there isn't any pressure buildup, then there is a suspected leak in the system. The ECM then tests for small leaks by keeping the vent valve closed and closes the purge valve to monitor the fuel tank pressure after the vehicle has been sitting for a period of time to see if the system has a leak. If a leak is detected, then pressure will drop and the ECM will set a diagnostic trouble. Here we're looking at the EVAP system and how it works. Here is the fuel tank. Here's the vent valve solenoid. Here's the charcoal canister. And here's a purge valve solenoid. The way this the system works is the fuel vapors that are created in the fuel tank are drawn into the charcoal canister and stored there as well. The vent valve op normally open vents fresh air into the charcoal canister and the purge valve solenoid which is normally closed opens when the ECM commands it to and draws fresh air along with fuel vapors through this line and into the engine. Most common failures of the vent valve are due to the fact that the vent valve is located next to the charcoal canister and gas tank underneath the vehicle and is exposed to the elements of the environment. The most common failures are due to an improperly sealing vent valve of clogged elements and debris. Again, since the vent valve is exposed to the elements, it is possible that a rodent of some sort got to the wires and created an open. The vent valve could potentially fail electronically from the vent valve solenoid as well. The solenoid could be shorted or create an open in the circuit. If your DTCs are P0498 or P0499, there is either high voltage or low voltage, meaning the circuit is either shorted to ground or shorted to voltage. Although we aren't diagnosing the component here, we do need to make sure that our circuit is operating properly so we don't condemn the vent valve as being the problem. The simplest way to check for proper operation of the high and low voltage is to do a fo function test on the scan tool and monitor the EVAP vent solenoid valve control circuit low voltage test status and EVAP vent solenoid valve control circuit high voltage test status. If the circuit is operating properly, it will display OK. If there is a problem with the circuit, it will display malfunction. We can observe here that the EVAP vent solenoid valve is venting and we can see that the EVAP vent solenoid valve control circuit high voltage test status is not running. But when we scroll down, we do see that the EVAP vent solenoid valve control circuit low voltage test status is OK, as well as the valve control circuit open test status is OK as well. Now when we go ahead and command the vent valve to not vent and shut the valve, we can observe that the vent solenoid valve control circuit open test status is not running now as well as the EVAP vent solenoid valve control circuit low voltage test status is not running also. But we do see that the vent solenoid valve control circuit high voltage test status is OK. If you have a P0449 evaporative emissions vent solenoid valve control circuit DTC, you want to measure the resistance across these two terminals. If your DVOM reads between 10 to 30 ohms, the vent valve is within spec. You want to take your DVOM and set it to ohms. Your DVOM should read OL or out of limit. You want to take your two leads and you just want to touch it to each of the two terminals and make sure that you don't touch the two terminals together otherwise you won't get an accurate reading. And as you can see when we touch the two terminals our resistance check 
checks out to be 20.5 ohms, which is within spec between 10 to 30 ohms. If you have a P0446 Evaporative Emission Vent System Performance DTC, you first want to verify the system is working properly with the scan tool by using the data display function. Monitor the fuel tank pressure sensor voltage values are within 1.3 to 1.7 volts with the engine on and the fuel filler cap off. Next, you want to let the vehicle idle at operating temperatures for 5 minutes. What you want to do here is you want to command the evap purge load valve to open to 50%. Once you've done that, you want to scroll down and monitor the fuel tank pressure sensor and voltage. You can see here that our fuel tank pressure sensor and voltage is 1.7 volts and you want to make sure and monitor that the fuel tank pressure sensor voltage does not rise above 2.5 volts. Once you have inspected the system for proper operation, you want to inspect the EVAP system visually of the hoses, the charcoal canister, and the vent valve solenoid for blockage. If nothing was found, you want to use the scan tool to use the functional test and seal the EVAP system. Now you want to make sure that your fuel level is between 15 to 85 percent full. Here now you want to hit the seal, button, the seal command and make sure you seal the system and now you want to fill the system with 5 inches of hydrogen. You then want to command the vent valve solenoid to open and the pressure to drop to 0 inches of hydrogen. If it doesn't drop to zero, verify no blockage in the vent inlet or in the vent hose. If there isn't a blockage present, then replace the vent valve solenoid. If you suspect a bad vent valve solenoid and you don't have a scan tool available, you could always remove the component and test for airflow. What you want to do is you want to blow in through one side of the hose and check for airflow through the vent valve solenoid and through the entire other side of the hose and the airflow should come out the other end. There should be no restrictions and it doesn't matter which side of the hose that you blow through, there should be air flowing either way. Now what you want to do is you take your alligator clips, making sure they don't make contact with each other when you're connecting them to the terminals, otherwise they'll short. And as soon as you energize that vent valve solenoid with 12 volts, you'll hear it click. And that's the vent valve shutting and now there should be no airflow within the system. You can test that by taking one side of the hoses and blowing through it and there should be no airflow through the system.